I've got something really special for you this week and it's a design I've been wanting to try out for a while. It's a beautiful velvet effect mani with crystals and caviar beads and then <gasps> underneath it's gorgeous Swarovski crystals. So welcome to another video from Natasha Lee and please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I've had so many questions on my recent videos asking if these are my natural nails, and yes they are, but I do use a layer of Gel 2 Skyscraper Foundation Gel over the top to strengthen them. As always, we're going to start by cleansing the nails after filing, and after my mother-in-law had a word with me, she said I needed to start painting my right hand before I did my tutorials, so I have done listening to her, thank you Jen. No mother-in-law jokes please, I love my mother-in-law very, very dearly. Unfortunately though, I didn't wait for my nail polish to dry before I started, so already I'm putting dings in it. I'm starting with my usual peel off base coat, and full links to all the products are in the description. Apply a thin layer to all 10 nails and allow to dry. Do also remember just to cap those edges too. Now this is a two stage design, if you like you can just do the design on the top of the nail and not the crystals underneath, but if you do want to do the crystals underneath just remember to clean the underside of your nails. Essie's Aruba Blue is one of my absolute favourite colours, however it does require three coats. I've had a lot of comments recently asking about why I paint nails the way I do as opposed to this traditional three stage process, and that's because I find by dabbing a colour, especially a bold colour like this, around the cuticle area first, especially on the first coat, you get a super, super neat design. Oh, hair. And then just make sure you try and draw it over quickly because I pulled out the hair, you can see it started to dry slightly but it's still totally salvageable. After you've applied to all 10 nails and allowed to dry, go in with your second coat. Now I did get quite a good coverage this time, but I could still see the light coming through underneath, so I decided to go in with a third coat as well. And you can see here why it's such a popular colour with me, it's so rich and beautiful. This design will work best with iridescent or colour shifting polishes. Now at this stage I started applying my OPI matte top coat and came across a bit of a problem. I realised that it was actually taking some of the colour off and onto the brush, which is not good because it's going to end up ruining my matte top coat. And you can see here the blue on the brush. So I decided instead to apply a regular top coat, and this is one that I've seen everyone using so I've just literally got it yesterday. So I applied it to the remaining four nails to see if it would work better underneath the matte top coat. This was literally the first time I'd open the bottle and use it, so I made a bit of a mess up with it really. I applied too much, at first I applied too little, and I'm used to using my sesh feet, so I tried to apply it like that, and then started flooding the nail, so I had to start drawing the excess back off. But that's down to my technique and not the polish, that was just me being a complete and utter numpty. And if you make any mistakes or get any on the skin, then just use a brush dipped in acetone or nail polish remover to tidy up. Once the top coat was dry, and that was really fast because it is a quick drying top coat, I applied my matte top coat over the top of the glossy top coat, if that makes sense. And I don't know if it's because I applied it over the top of a glossy top coat, but it seemed to dry really, really quickly, and you can actually see it turning matte. It was kind of freaky, to be honest with you. If there's any areas around the cuticle area and side walls that you haven't gone right the way up to with the matte top coat, and you can see a glossy line, then just take a striping brush, which I couldn't seem to get the right amount on this one, and just carefully apply it around the bottom. It won't leave a very obvious line, so you don't have to worry. It's less noticeable than having like a big glossy glowing line around your cuticle area. And now it's time to apply our crystals to the top of the nail. We're going to need a fine dotting tool, I'm also using a crystal katana to help me pick up my crystals and caviar beads. And then I've got silver caviar beads and Shrosky AB crystals in SS5 and SS3. Once you've decanted some top coat onto a tile or a pad, take your dotting tool and just apply a small amount at a time onto the nail to stick the crystals and caviar beads to. Now I hadn't really planned this in great detail in my head, I just had a rough idea of what I wanted to do, so you don't have to be too perfect. So I just started picking up a selection of the SS5 crystals and the SS3 and then adding caviar beads either side of those. And just to point out that I am using the glossy top coat to stick these crystals and beads down with, the matte top coat just doesn't hold them the same way. 
and just keep applying the crystals in various sizes, whatever you feel looks best for the design that you want to achieve. And then use the caviar beads to fill in any little gaps in between and it makes it look really crystallised. I only wanted to put this design on my ring finger and just to curve around the side of the cuticle area and side walls. But you could do it however you prefer, you could even do a full nail coverage if you want. But from experience in my salon, full nail coverage doesn't last as well, you tend to lose more crystals, especially with polish. So if you want to do this look for an event or a wedding or you want it to last, I recommend trying to keep the crystals close to the bottom side of the nail, not the tip because they can get knocked off. And this is the first stage finished and it is so pretty. You could just leave it like this if you wanted, but I want to make it extra special, so on to stage two. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I just received an order from the US from Bliss Kiss with Simply Peel and Simply Pure in. Now it cost a fortune in shipping and import duty, so this stuff better be good. I first heard about this when everyone kept commenting on my water marbling video from two years ago saying simply peel like it's no big deal. And I had no idea what they meant, of course now I do, but I've got to say no one warned me it smells really fishy. Now I'm just applying this to my fingertips on the underside just in case I make a mess with the polish when I apply it. And other than the slightly disturbing fishy smell it's actually really easy to use and it surprised me how thin it was when I was applying it. I found it much better than my usual glue based barrier that I use in my other videos. Once you've applied it allow for it to dry and it will turn clear and sparkly with glitter when it's dry. And then I'm just going in with my peel off base coat again and then some colour club harp on it because who doesn't love a bit of hollow. Once your peel off base coat is dry on the underside of your tips go in with your hollow silver or you can use normal silver if you prefer but I thought this would look much prettier. I did flood the brush a little bit too much so with this it's better to go less is more and then if you do get it spilling at all just go in with an orange wood stick and take off the excess. Do be careful when applying the base coat with it being a peel off if it touches the liquid latex it will actually peel off. Once the silver is dry on the underside of all the nails we're going to apply a little of the glossy top coat just in one area at a time with the dotting tool and this is so we can stick the crystals to it. And I'm starting with the SS5 crystals going in a line from the top to the bottom down the middle of the nail. I find that's easiest because it gives you a line to follow either side and makes the crystals look neater. When you start to run out of space swap to the SS3 crystals which are smaller and then fill in either tiny gaps in with a couple of caviar beads just to keep that sparkle. Now I will say I know this isn't the most practical idea but it's so pretty. If you've got a special occasion, a prom, a wedding or something like that, imagine how fantastic this would look on pictures. Unless you can encapsulate it, I wouldn't suggest this for everyday wear because it would harbour bacteria, which would be pretty ew, to be honest. Once you've peeled off your Simply Peel, it's all done. And don't they look so pretty and sparkly? I just can't stop staring at them. And I've shown them to anyone who has come into contact with me, basically. I know I need to get some better lights for filming because these just aren't picking up the sparkle properly but they are absolutely stunning. Finish with a slick of cuticle oil and I'm giving this one a go and really loving it at the moment. And just make sure you don't get it on the matte top coat because it will ruin that lovely matte effect. But here is the finished look and these are so luxe. They are just classy and elegant and when you turn them over and see that sparkle it's just like wow. Thank you very much to my subscriber Madison Conway who asked me a few weeks ago if I would do a double sided mani and it got me thinking how could I add a twist to this. I hope you enjoy this, this is just such a classy design. And I can tell you now all the crystals and caviar beads have lasted and I've been wearing it for over a day and doing everything that I usually do with my kids and in the house. I hope you've enjoyed this video, please let me know if you give it a go, this would look amazing encapsulated with acrylic or gels as well.